and it says we are live uh if you can hear us online guys please type type David is awesome, just to, make, just to make sure that you can properly hear us. Uh, I'm uh, assuming you can, so I'll just jump right in and say welcome. I'm uh, super happy to have you. everyone here and super happy thank to have you, you David. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for having me. I was just doing an Instagram live 20-ish, 30 minutes ago, and I was just going on and on and on and on about how I love doing the podcast interview with you. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. you're, you're like one, one of my favorite people, seriously. Okay, Thanks. so my name is Anya. We have David Morales with us today, and David will tell us all about what he's doing in just a second. Before we start, I just want to make sure that you know that you can type, if you have any questions for me or David as we go, type them in the chat. Just use the word question, all caps, and then write your question so I can easily see it and grab it. I will ask any question that is uh, related to the workflow in the moment and save the others for the Q&A at the end. Uh, hopefully we'll have time for that. Um, if also before we start, please grab the link, share it with your friends on your social media so they can join us as well. I think today's going to be very fun and I really hope that all of you will enjoy it. And we do have a feedback form. I'll share it at the beginning and at the end, if you guys can, when the, the workshop, the live demo is over, if you could let us know your thoughts using that super short feedback form. It takes literally one minute uh, and it will help us greatly because we will know what to improve for the next live demos and workshops if you tell us your honest thoughts. Also, it's anonymous, so you can speak your heart's uh, content. Whatever. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to say. Also, subscribe to our channel to stay updated with everything that we have coming. Okay, so that is pretty much it. So, David, um, would you like to tell us what you will be doing today and show us your uh, awesome sketchbook that I will highlight? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, what we're doing today is um, it's a pond that uh, I have back in Colombia, which actually one of my uh, favorite things to, to, to sketch when I'm, when I'm back there. And we're going to try to keep it under an hour, which is, um, it's a very panoramic uh, 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 picture, that, that, that is the, the reference picture is very panoramic, but we're going to try to, to, to do both pages. But if we can, we just try to finish one of them. And this is uh, the sketchbook we're going to use, which is a uh, nature uh, A5 panoramic uh, sketchbook. It's an, an A5 and an, an A6. An A6 an, uh, that's an uh, A6, Anya? yeah. An A6, yeah, A6. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and I've been practicing uh, with him, with, with it, uh, for the last couple of weeks. And because I really like this, this, this format, you know, it's the prime thing is really beautiful uh, to feel, Thank you know. You. Wow. And there is something that I, that I like to do is just like uh, frame it over both pages, which is like maybe more dramatic, you know, than, than just one of them. This is some of the birds around here that uh, the house, you know. Wow. And this is the pond that I've been practicing uh, to see how, because uh, as, as I said before, uh, you could spend like maybe the whole day, uh, four hours, one hour, 15 minutes, and it depends how detailed you, you, you want to go. So I want to, I want to make sure that we get in some uh, point before an hour uh, what we're going to achieve, something around this. You know. mm -hmm. That's hot press, right? The paper? Yes. Yes, Sorry. It, is. it is. Yeah, it just is. confirming. Yeah. Um, love the birds, stunning. These are just some of the comments coming from the chat. So uh, yeah, everyone's, uh, everyone's mesmerized by your beautiful art. <laughs> okay, Thank so you. I just shared the the reference photo for today. I just put it on the chat. It's also in the video description. And if you got an email from Etcher, you should have gotten it as well in the email. So uh, let's start. We are going to draw. Actually, let me just quickly, if I can, um, let me just try to quickly share my screen uh, so I can uh, show the reference. Okay, nice. Everywhere. Well, this is the reference, yeah. Yeah, uh, so what I'm, I think what I'm going to can... yeah. Go ahead. There's there's ahead. one thing that that, that I that I usually do uh, when I uh, take like uh, 
reference from future. Uh, if I don't understand the, the values, I might uh, turn it black and white. So if, if anyone uh, wants to uh, follow our sketch with us, and it, uh, maybe it's, it's, it's easier for them to just uh, put it black and white and, 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 and put mm -hmm. a little bit more contrast to see what is black and see the values, you know, it, sometimes mm -hmm. it, it helps. So uh, yeah. that's a little a tip. tip. Just if that's a great anyone tip. wants to follow us, you know. Okay, okay, let's get you back on spotlight. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, try to to frame what I'm going to sketch, uh, which is going to go like for. So I'm going to do like some basic uh, uh, pencil lines for the for the flower around here. Mm -hmm. And then I know there's like this uh, dark spot here. And then the, how do you call it? Lily pots? Uh, how do you call Lily it? pads, yeah. Lily pots. I'm not gonna sketch the, the train. I'm gonna skip it. Then I might not even follow what I do with the pencil, but it's like it helps me to know where that that, that I'm gonna, uh, you know, frame the whole sketch. So a question that uh, no one asked this, but I think it's helpful. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of misconceptions and assumptions about sketching with a pencil when it's supposed to be a pen sketch. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I think. It shouldn't be any rules, you know. I mean, it, I mean, people should have fun doing it. And if you feel comfortable uh, using a pen or a pencil, why not? You know, uh, what I like to do is like to make sure that uh, everything is going to be uh, where I wanted I wanted it to be. You know that. If I have to uh, squeeze it a little bit, I do it with, with the pencil first. I mean, the, 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 the scene, which is sometimes is not uh, exactly how it is. It's just, I want to sketch the feeling of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what I use the pen, the pencil. And maybe that's about it. I mean, I know from this is the first leaf that I'm gonna do, and this is the flower here, and that's about it. But if you wanna do a little bit more, cause you feel, uh, secure doing it i mean why not i mean actually what 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 i like uh from the 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 sketch i mean the final sketch is that i like it is that i that, that when i look uh I, I i like what i see and i remember where i was i mean it's just an exercise i mean it shouldn't be any rules i'm, I'm sorry if awesome. anyone think uh, differently but that's the way i see it you know yeah uh, what size pens are you using just so everyone can prepare okay after the Sorry. pencil i'm gonna use the oh the 005 okay the, the thinnest Do one like we have. Little, yeah the, the thinnest one and then the dark ones i'm gonna try to use the the, the brush maybe the biggest one because doing doing uh doing it fast maybe this this thing around here we're gonna go with the brush after i know where we uh, going. Wow. I love how loose uh, your lines are. Oh, thank you. There's many people that ask me about that. I mean, it's just the way I grab the pen because I just don't want to go uh, through so many details, you know. Mm -hmm. So the reason you don't want a lot of details, it's because it might overwork the piece? Uh, yeah. The other day I was hearing about that uh, it is so beautiful to have mini, mini little uh, abstract uh, drawings in your draw. And like, if you close up, it's like everything is abstract and you don't even understand what it is. But then when you when you close out, I mean, when you zoom out and it appears uh, the, the scene and that maybe that's what I like about the looseness, you know? Mm -hmm.
links for the art materials all are coming into the chat. David is using our Etcher Fineliners and our Etcher Sketchbook Hot Press A6. Um, can you walk us through uh, your choices? Like, why are you? So you're outlining everything. Is there are there parts that you do not draw that you leave empty, or yeah, how? What are you thinking? Well, yeah, well, actually, what I do is try to understand what is the lighter part of the scene and then the darker one and then um, to understand the values. So what I'm trying to just make a little bit uh, to know where I'm going, what I'm going to do, what I did with the, with the pen, with the pencil, I'm doing it back uh, again with, with the fine liner, maybe a little different, you know, just trying to find the proportions of what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Then there's like start maybe a little bit like uh, if people are familiar with how to do it with watercolor, I go layer by layer, like getting darker and darker, you know. It's almost the same. And I also love how you were able to look at the photo reference and select a part of it to put on the sketchbook because the photo reference is a large rectangle and the sketchbook is a very thin rectangle. So how did you go about knowing what to put on the page and how? Well, that's one of the reasons that why I do it uh, first, uh, first of all with, with the pencil because, uh, you know, it's like a little bit like reality that you don't, you don't, you can frame it until you put it on, on, on the paper, unless you do, you know, I mean, it's my way to frame it, use the pencil. And I thought maybe the, the, the flower had to be in, 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 in some important point, which is like almost the middle of this page. And then all the, 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 the leaves around here, maybe the important things. And to understand what it is, maybe this, things which is like a metal thing up in, in the in the in the ceiling that are reflected in the in the water. And I mm -hmm. think those make a beautiful reflection. So I was trying to make sure it, that those showed up. And yeah, I love how you simplify the shapes of the photo reference to basically ovals and lines like straight lines. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I just try not to go to any detail yet. Well, yet, I mean, never try to go to detail. Yeah. Maybe I'm not good at details. <laughs> uh, or maybe, no, yeah, just... I mean, I, th I think it's part of making art, you know, when you simplify the subject matter, you're choosing to portray what truly makes the piece come alive. And that's what gives the magic to it. So even though you're painting or drawing very realistically, you're choosing what matters the most, at least to you. And that's how your unique visual voice comes through your pieces and how we know it's you and not someone else doing another drawing. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Couldn't be well, wrong. It's, it's just... Um... Maybe we, we talk about this uh, before, but what, what it is, there's a couple things that I like about sketches. One thing is uh, to understand, you know, so to understand how uh, things work and how maybe how reflection uh, arise uh, until the, the, the leaf and it deform. And I try to pay attention to that thing when, 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 I, when I sketch. Uh, it started when I when I was when I was in college um, because I wanted to understand how buildings uh, were designed and how how the proportions uh, were in buildings and the best uh, way to do it was sketching you know so 
you choose what to what to what to pay attention to. You know, mm -hmm. it's what you are interested in uh, that you pay attention to, and maybe that's what it looks different from maybe because if if it was any other person, you would pay attention to another thing. You know. Mm -hmm. So for a total beginner, because we have a couple of people asking um, how to you know do this if you're a complete, complete beginner. So correct me if I'm wrong. So I'm thinking if you have a reference photo, maybe squint your eyes to see, see the main shapes, right? So yeah. you see more or less what kind of shapes you have there. And then that's when you start to decide where to draw the lines, like th throughout the bigger shapes. Is that it? Is that what you're doing or? Uh, it's not that much about shapes it's uh -huh. more about values more okay. about what is uh dark or what is uh, uh white light or okay. light uh, uh -huh. and then in the middle there's a lot of gray things so for example uh mm. this part of the of the of the reference it it's the sky reflecting in uh -huh. the water but mm -hmm. then down in the water there's like some stones uh, that I'm not gonna go, uh, uh, I'm not gonna detail them, but mm -hmm. this is uh, is lighter than maybe this other part. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go like one time, like a layer of lines in this particular spot of the water. But okay, so that you... makes sense. So that's why I'm sorry. So that is why you shared that tip at the beginning where you grab the reference image and you make it all uh, black yes. and white and gray yes. so you, you can yes. easily if see you, what to draw. Yes. Okay. If you if you don't understand the values when it is in color, you can just like uh, uh, put it black and white and then you can understand it easier, you know. Mm -hmm. But it is all about layers. I mean, can you talk a little screen. bit about that shadow technique that you're using? This is a cross hatch, which is mm -hmm. just um, crossing lines, one over the others. And mm -hmm. that's what gives you the values. This is, uh, well, it, it should be like uh, no more than four uh, directions. But mm. then I sometimes I use like so many. I mean, I suppose everyone has their own uh, way to do it, but mine is like layers over layers. You could do like short, and there's many ways to do it, but mine is like most of the time, like big uh, layer over another a little bit uh, smaller than 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 the other one. That does make sense. Okay, so for the lighter value of shadow, you just do it once. If you want it to be darker, yep. then you do it over in a different direction and you go up exactly. until four times. Okay, that does make sense. Yeah, and if it doesn't get, because you can, you can put the lines really close together and it gets darker. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can do more layers and it gets darker. There's so many ways to, to get where you want, but um, you do you layers, it's better more than, for you. Yes, it's just like I do as many as I need until I get where I need to. A very sweet comment from the chat from Sabrina. She's saying, what beautiful line quality in your hatching. Oh, thanks. There is a lot of practice there because so many people ask about uh, if, if uh, I use rulers, for example. I don't, I never. It's just, you know, there's so many, uh, so much time doing lines, you know. It's just a. Uh... Oh. We, we are 20 minutes past the hour, just so you know. The, the leaves are sometimes really difficult to sketch because they have like really small shadows. So you have to simplify those, you know. We'll see it, we'll see it later. 
Oh, a great question here from Aileen. How do you sketch the leaves that are under the water? Well, you can, you have to um, understand it as values to, I mean, there's one like right here. Mm -hmm. And I know the leaf is a little lighter than the water because it's up, uh, the leaf is, is, is it's up and then there's the, there's the stones down there. So if I want to do this leaf, I should do another layer on the bottom like this. Mm -hmm. I should do another layer and leave the leaf like this. Ah, uh, so, mind so blown. See this one? <laughs> wow, I never thought about that. Because wow. the deeper you want to go, the more layers you should add. And that's why I say that this could take hours or 50 minutes, you know, because yeah. the deeper I want to go right here. Can you see the leaf here? Can you mm -hmm. see it? Now this I see one. it because of the cross hatching okay. layer too. Exactly. Yeah. And there's the leaf is like it flips uh, over. So here is wider, it's lighter than here. So I could do another layer here. Uh, so you go deeper and deeper and darker and darker. Yes. And this one, I could do it like this. And get this little thing a little bit uh, lighter. This is just a matter of uh, contrast. OK, that does make sense. Wow. Thank you for the golden question, Aileen. This uh, unraveled a new set of possibilities for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's as I say, it's just like, if you were uh, putting watercolor here, you, you could do lighter and then you go like from the lighter to the, to the darker uh, uh, value. Mm -hmm. Another great question from Nicole. So uh, Nicole noticed that when you do the cross hatching, you always go from inwards outwards. So you go away from yourself. Is that because it's easier for you to do the lines or do you ever do yeah, it I in another direction? Yeah, I suppose so. If I, if I do it like this, I feel it uh, uh, a little bit more difficult. I mean, suppose this is my way to do it. Just, But as I say, I suppose everyone has it's it, its own way, you know. It's like it's like the signature. I mean, they, they you you sign, and then if they, they ask you to sign backwards, I mean, you, you won't be able to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just uh, feeding you the chat comments saying that you are a really good drawer, says Mason. And Aileen, now that you explained that technique, I think she's going to try and draw a lily pond that she has nearby again, nice. which I'm very looking forward to see. Uh, and by the way, while you're sketching that detail, I just want to make sure everyone knows that David is going to host a mini workshop as usual uh, and we are doing another botanical, a different reference. So if you'd like to dig a little bit deeper on this kind of drawing, you are more than welcome to check the mini workshop. There are only 300 spots. It looks like a lot, but sometimes they fill in pretty quickly. So if you're interested, I recommend you checking it out. And it's only $5.50. So if you'd like to support David, there you go. What pen are you using now? That's a thicker one, right? The, uh, the, yeah, I got the O3. Because okay. we have we we could go like cross hatching with the with the uh, double 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 O5 uh, until you get this value. But since we're going a little bit uh, fast tonight, okay, you're using you other pens get, to speed yes, it up. you can yeah, and you can even get the brush like this. Um, oh my God, that's bold. Yeah, it is the brush. So mm -hmm. you can get the 
the darker values. Uh, talking about values, Rachana Damani asked a really good question. So she's asking if you change the pressure on the pen to get more values. Uh, well, I can change the pressure of the brush, but if you have a paper like this with, with a little texture, and I'm going to show it to you. This one is the O3. Okay, let's see. If you get the O5 and use and you're using uh, a paper with a little bit of, uh, bit of uh, texture, you can go like this and show it. And it works almost as a pencil, you know, like you can do really light things. Okay. And I suppose the answer is yes, you can do it. Not with all of them, but and not with all the papers, because if you have really uh, flat paper, it, would, it, would, it, it wouldn't work. It has to have some texture. Makes sense. So there's a there's a lid down uh, under the water here, and we're gonna do with. I'm gonna go with the darker uh, value here, and then we get that one the underwater. Oh, third layer. And that's another thing that you can do. So, so I know that you explained that to get uh, darker values, you do the cross hatching up to four, up to four times, up to four layers. Yeah, actually, but, you can do it. You can do it yeah. vertical, horizontal, and both diagonals. That is exactly. the four layers, you know, because mm -hmm. if okay. you start doing a little uh, more degrees, sometimes it looks uh, uh, odd, but well, it just I, I wouldn't know how to say it. It's just a matter of practice, which how many uh, times you can go. And you can change, even you can change the, the, the width. Yes. And That's what I was target. thinking. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because yes. it's like if you want to target. make it very much darker, very much darker. Oh, such good English. Yay, yay. Whoa, much whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just get a, a thick pen and problem solved. Yeah. So if I want this uh, flower to pop up as mm -hmm. a white thing, the whiter thing in the whole uh, scene is, the, is, the, is, the, is the, um, the flower, I have to go with layers on the other things but the flower. You know, just like I leave this the highlight without touching it. So you're talking about negative painting, right? Yeah, some of that, yeah. So the flower pops up because we don't really i mean you did draw the flower but you just that's it you basically yes. don't touch yes. it 
yes, I'm going to arrive into the, the, the lines that I made with the hatch, and then I'm going to mm -hmm. leave the, the, the flower uh, just like the white paper. Yeah. Um, so a question about shading again. I think we more or less touched this, but I don't think we fully went into it. So the question is, if you also vary the distance between the lines of the hatching to create different values, and the short answer is yes, right? Yes, yes. But um, that happens a lot. If I'm going really slow, I just like do it. Um, Maybe the distance, uh, I just have my distance. And if I try to do it a little closer, it will take, it will take me more time uh, to do it. So I try to do more layers, mm -hmm. you know. But yes, I mean, if you, if you put your lines, for example, let's see, if you do it really close together, it gets darker than if you go like this, you know. Mm -hmm. Of course, but in that case, I just go like this. There's like um, the reflection when the the water touch the the, mm -hmm. the edge of the leaf. You you have to pay attention that there's like a a, a really uh, light border because the water like folds uh, when it rises to the leaf, and if you if you don't pay attention to it, it won't uh -huh. give you the sense of the leaf is just touching the water, you know, this little thing that you, that you Yeah, okay, that's a very fine, see, you're choosing the details. That's what yeah. I was talking about. That detail makes the whole piece pop. That's, I never even thought about that, wow. Oh, great question from Nicole. Nicole asks so many questions all the time. It's amazing. She has a never ending well of questions, amazing questions, uh -huh. by the way. Uh, so Nicole uh, says, since you chose a portion of the scene, mm -hmm. would you today do thumbnails first is, or is it, isn't, would, would you typically do thumbnails first or is it intuitive? No, no it's more intuitive than, than, okay. than yeah. Oh, I love how you're using the brush pen to get those very big shadows on the water just quickly. Yep. Wow, and the variation of line is beautiful. Just having a look at the reference. Oh. So is that a way for you to finish the um, composition instead of doing cross hatching up until the end? Is it like an aesthetical choice to use only the brush pen to just kind of fade away? Mm, no, not really. I'm just trying to do the darker uh, values uh, around the around the the flower. Flower. Yeah. Uh -huh. But then there's like a really uh, light spot around here mm -hmm. that I'm going to do it later. I'm just going ah, okay. to the darker, the darker uh, values. Does it matter doing darker values first or later? Uh, if they're the darkest, uh, no, it doesn't. Just go like and do like some marks to again frame what I'm doing, what I'm doing, because sometimes you get lost. So I'm for example, I know this uh, corner here is just like black. This one, and that's it. I just did it, and it stays there. And then from there, I I start like uh, 
doing things by by looking the the, 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 the distances. I know there's uh. like uh, a thing around here, and there's a black big thing around here because this grass is coming from here, and then. Right here is the light, the, the, the light, the, the wire part of this uh, reference. So all these I have to do one layer, maybe more than one. Mm -hmm. This feels to me like uh, making puzzles when you try to get the frame first and then you find the most clear spots to get the pieces and then you find out the harder part. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's just try to put darker uh, so nice find where, where I am that makes sense uh, great questions from okay Douglas first so he asks if you were to take much more time would you avoid the brush pen oh yes yeah yeah I would uh, actually but it's because um, when I go out to sketch I like to go as lighter as I can. Mm -hmm. So I got used to just one pen and that was the 005. The 05 the 05 or the 005? No, the double the double 005. Wow. And you do everything with just that one pen. Yes. Yes. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is David Morales being a sir doing awesome things. Uh, question from Dale. Uh, he's asking if you can also curve your cross hatching lines to show the form. Yes, you could. I don't do it as much as so many people does because I mean mm -hmm. they just like make the form uh, with the with with the lines like going uh, round it. But I don't do it. I, it just it's just my way. To do it. Well, your way is awesome. That's why we uh, asked you to be here. Uh, so if you'd like, uh, ladies and gentlemen and everyone watching, if you'd like to learn more from David, if you'd like to take, instead of one hour, if you'd like to spend 90 minutes on a piece, again, botanicals, full, like two full pages, then please consider enrolling in David's workshop. It's only $5.50 and you will be supporting the artist link to come to the chat soon. And it's on January 22nd, in case you were wondering. And if you do enroll and you can't make it for any reason, you get the recording, so. And this is the point when you take a zoom out and start looking what happens here and what happens here. And maybe this one uh, is this uh, value is almost the same as this one. And then you're right. And then you start looking where more values are. All this white thing in the middle is not white. It's gray or it's just a, a darker value. So you have to start putting layers on it. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, a great question from Nicole again. So she's asking, if you're using multiple pens, do you make sure they're all from the same set to keep the black color consistent? <laughs> I know. Well, actually, the, today is really cool because I have uh, the etcher, uh, the whole set of fine liners, but sometimes you can. And then I have my, for example, my phantom paint with some kind of ink, and then you use the the fine liner, fine liner ink, and then there's different blacks in your uh, sketch. It's okay. It's just you know, uh, it tells you what you were and how you were doing it, and you remember when you see it. I mean, it's just it doesn't matter that much for me. It's not like when you are making a painting in, in your studio. And you pay more attention to that when you're, you know, still at home or at the studio painting. You know what I'm saying? If you're in the street or on, on the way, you just do with what you want, what you have. the 
want here. Thank you everyone who enrolled in um, David's workshop. We have uh, quite a bunch of students enrolling already. Of course, like, duh, just look at your sketchbook. Who does not want to draw more like you? I have some more questions, but I'll save them for just in a second because I see you are very focused in those contrasts. Uh, and I'll just take the opportunity to tell everyone what I just uh, put on the chat. We are uh, doing three live demos a week at the moment. We are not doing a live demo this Friday. Uh, we had a last minute issue that, and we had to postpone that live demo, but we are doing one this Sunday with Mark Brewer. Mark is coming back. If you don't know Mark, then you're in for a treat. Uh, he does ink drawings with um, flag snips. And uh, then he, wa he adds watercolor on top of them. So it's really, really cool. He's a great artist. Um, and we do, all, we do also have an interview with him on our website. And yeah, we're starting to have four live demos a week in uh, February, mid, mid, mid 20th of February. That's when they start. We're going to have a live demo every Sunday, Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we're trying to have 10 live demos a week, 10 by the end of the week, at least seven or eight we want to, but we are we're really trying for 10. Uh, so yeah, we're offering a bunch of live demos on different subjects. If you know uh, artists that you'd love to see teach here, please email us at hello at etrelab.com. We'd love, we'd love to, to hear your thoughts. Um, and uh, yeah, you, we do this for you because you guys are awesome and we love, we love what we're doing. So we'll just wanna make more. Okay, David, what are you doing now? Well, I'm trying to do some more layers to just get the, the flower to pop up a little bit more. You know? The darker I get, the round, the round the, of, of the flower, the pop. I mean, the more pop, the flower will become. Mm -hmm. But if you have, if you go darker, with one value, you have to go darker with the whole rest of it. Because what what matters is the, the relationship between uh, between them. You know, mm -hmm. if not, you will end up with the whole black uh, thing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I mean, sure, you. It looks to me like you decide where the lightest lights and darkest darks are going to be at the beginning of the drawing so you know where yes. to apply the okay and yep. is that enough to keep you from overworking the piece because at least when i do it i go way too dark on places that should not go dark so i have that issue yeah actually when you decide where the black is going to be and when where the light light the lighter piece is going to be you can decide how to do the grays and that is very effective uh not to overdo it you know Sometimes you just put too much ink and then you have to be careful because you have to learn when to, when to stop, you know? I guess the more you, the more you draw, the more aware you are of how to control yourself. Uh, 15 minutes to the hour. So we have 15 minutes left. We can go a little bit more over time. I just want you to know the time. Okay. I'm just going through the chat just to make sure. Oh, great question from S-A-R. Say R. I hope I'm saying the names right. I'm so sorry. So uh, they're asking, how do you decide if your layout is uh, horizontal or vertical? Well, I, I, I like the landscapes to be horizontal because, mm -hmm. uh, as I say, it's a little bit more dramatic and I like how they frame. Uh, then there's some other things that I, that I used to sketch, like my family or my cat. Uh, 
And in that uh, case, I used the uh, O5, the, 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 A, the, the A5 uh, size, uh, but very cold. Uh, but I don't have a, I mean, I, I can change it, you know. It's just, it depends when I see the, the where I'm gonna sketch, I, I suppose in that moment I decide what to do. Mm -hmm. Their uh, requests are coming in for you to give us a picture of the final piece so they can see it, uh, you know, super closely when you're done because uh, this okay. is really cool. Oh, yes, definitely. As you see by contrast, the flower is popping up just slowly. Then, then if you see the flower and then you see the leaf, you mm -hmm. can see how different they are in the reference and they're not there here yet. So mm -hmm. you sh we should do another layer for the leaf. Actually, for all of them. But this leaf, I would have said, like here. Wow. So many questions are coming in, so many great comments. Uh, Nancy says, this is so beautiful. We'll join the workshop as soon as this is completed. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, thank you so much, David, Anya, and at your lab. You're most welcome. We love doing these. And thank you for the art artist recommendations, everyone. And a great question from Danny that I'll ask in just a second because I don't want to distract you. I have a bunch of great questions for you when we're able. Wow. Well, so at, at this time, you're just focusing on what's missing in terms of darks and just finishing up the piece. Is that it? Or what are you thinking? Well, actually, I'm looking for the different values. If I can uh -huh. just like do, uh, I was thinking about doing a big layer like here. But if I do it, I'm going to have to get this one darker and this one darker. So it's when you start. Uh, uh, it will it will take more time. So think about when 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 you edit a, a, a photo, when you do it in Photoshop, and then you do like the the, the most uh, con con the most con contrast contrast yeah contrast. Uh, mm -hmm. It will become mm -hmm. a black and white, the whole black and white thing. So you have mm -hmm. this little white uh, thing, and then most of the of the picture will become black mm -hmm. then you if you if you do a little bit uh less it will have like two grays and then three grays and then it will you know have a huge bunch of grays so we could do like a really black and white but if you if you want to spend more time you can do a lot of grays around you know like do so many layers so i'm trying to just keep the blackest uh, value, the darker values, and the lighter one, and try to understand how many grays we're going to do, you know. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I'm going to run through some of the questions that I have, but uh, let me know if it's distracting. You're so good at talking and painting that I'm like not really concerned at the moment. So Danny is asking if you ever painted with watercolor brushes because your gestural sketching is the opposite of what watercolorists do, like the push. Uh, ask that again, please. I don't oh, sorry, I'm maybe I'm, I'm, I'm being too distracted. No, I'll ask him just a second. Work. No? Yeah, you, you're you doing like, you're... Yeah, no, you okay, so have you ever... Have you ever painted with watercolor? 
Yes, yes, I have a lot. Well, actually and it, a lot, not, I mean, not, not as much as I do, we think, but I like and, it a lot. And do you hold the watercolor brushes the same way you do the pens or do you do it differently? <laughs> I suppose I do, I, now I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something that I do like, uh, that I want to do. It's just that it comes natural, you know? Yeah. So join us for the next live demo where David and I are going to team up together again and paint watercolor in the exact same oh. drawing technique. <laughs> See what comes out of it. That would be awesome. <laughs> but I suppose when I, when, I, when I want to do like go for a detail or respect a line or whatever, I grab my pen like this, you know, but since I want to go loose, I just grab like this. But I suppose it comes just like, I don't think about it much. Wow. And all of this, just by observing light and dark, just values. Yeah, it is just values. I mean, sometimes it doesn't even matter when, when you just like, uh, you just take distance and you see what it is, but then when you uh, zoom in, it's just lines, you know, it just, it's just, uh, as you said, it's shapes. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, right here, I'm not thinking this is this is a leaf of a uh, reflected leaf. I'm just watching what it is in the, in the picture and try to simulate it in the paper, you know. Oh, great question from Nicole. Again, Nicole, you're on fire as usual. Do you have an order that you like to go in when sketching a scene, like left to right, top to bottom? I always think about that, and I should start uh, from the top left. Okay. Because I'm, I'm right handed. But mm -hmm. I don't know why I always start with the opposite of it. <laughs> and while I'm doing it, I always think about it. I mean, I always say I should go there, but it just, I don't know. I, I, as you see, I, I, I started with this page, you know. When yeah. I'm this. I don't know why. It just, it happens. I wonder if it's because you're drawn to the lighter part. You know, like when we paint in watercolor, it's always light to dark. Maybe when you're drawing, you go from the lightest part of the drawing first, so you don't touch it. Yeah, but it and was like that. Part, no. just, I don't know why I just start to be okay. Okay, everyone, it's a new challenge for all of you, so... Uh, you're all following David on Instagram, and when he does videos of himself painting, we're going to observe <laughs> intently it and, <laughs> and find the common thing, like what is the, the link that is common to everyone, and we'll find that. Like, let's all be play detectives for a week or two now. Uh, we have a couple of material questions. Oh, this is like quite quick. So Douglas is asking where you get the silver clips that you use to hold the sketchbook. Uh, I got it on a trip to Japan that I did a couple of years ago. <laughs> so you can, you know, it's a really nice, um, how you said, I mean, you can go to get your clips to Japan mm -hmm. once in a while. Yeah. Another super quick question. If the, the red stamp on your images, it's your signature, right? Is it? No? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is. Well, it actually has, you know, when I was in college, um, I used to watch, uh, see some of the, I mean, egg on shield and, and clean uh, paintings, and they used to sign inside a square, and it looks so <laughs> architectural, and I love that. I mean, they used to do, let's see where I can do it. Uh, let's see, let's see here. They used to do this thing, 
and then inside they put their name and I did it for so many years like mm -hmm. this and then you put the date for example whatever and that was that used to be my signature and if you go like really back in my in my in my, in my uh drawings you can see it mm -hmm. uh then when I went to Japan I saw the I saw the the what they call a hanko, which is a stamp, mm -hmm. which is a, a red a stamp, stamp with the that, that they do. And then I understood that clean and they, they got it from there too. So I said I had to have my own hanko, and that's yeah. where I made my my red stamp. You know. Yeah, yeah, they do. They do. They are lovely and pretty. Considering your background, it makes sense too. Okay, let me grab another question from the, the chat. Uh, we already answered this in another question. And this question can wait a little bit longer, so you don't have to stop. Oh, great question. Um, the, David's Instagram handle is Dava22. I'm putting that on the chat. Okay, another question from Danny. We talked a little bit about that, but a couple of things we didn't mention. So Danny's asking, you said earlier that you usually start with the darkest areas. Would that be like negative painting, but with ink? And do you have any examples of when you choose that over this way? not sure how to Tough explain question. it i mean yes yes it is to put it in words it just sometimes i don't even think about it and just uh find the best uh way to to put like little uh reference points in in, mm -hmm. in, the, in, in, the, in the in the in the sketchbook so mm -hmm. sometimes i find i find that the darker uh value it's a nice reference like this one right here in the, in the, in the corner, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I know that I wanted it there because it's uh, really well placed. Compositional, yeah. Yes, and then uh, this one is, it, it, it's a light one. So I left that one when I did this. So mm -hmm. this one is dark and this one is light. It's just like uh, reference points in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the sketch. And I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, so, this hap this came up on the chat and it's uh, an issue that I, I have as well sometimes because when you're trying to frame something in a sketchbook, sometimes you try to put it there, but you go all over and it doesn't fit. So by adding those key points, then does it mean that it's okay if you change the reference enough? So let's say that those lily pads were not in that exact disposition, but oh, it yeah, would be definitely. okay to, yeah, there you go. You Definitely. change things yes. around so it kind of looks good on the page. It doesn't have to be exactly like the reference, even though you're measuring distances, as and long as it the, looks nice, right? Yeah, it, it depends what I'm what I'm trying to, to, to achieve. I mean, actually, and that is the beauty with nature, that you just can change it and it will still uh, be almost the same. For example, if I want to understand the structure of how the leaves come up because they have this special structure, I pay attention to that. So the leaves maybe wouldn't be that way like it is here because I know there is something that is not working out here. But maybe this time I'm more paying attention about the reflections. Mm -hmm. So I pay attention to the reflections and I try to emulate emulate the reflections as reality. But these lily pops, you know, they are a little bit where they are and I, I had a drain here and I didn't put it, you know. Uh, yeah. When you're doing a building, I try to measure where the windows are, for example, mm -hmm. and then the, the trees around the building, I don't pay attention much because what mm -hmm. I'm interested in understand is how the building is, uh, was designed and what the proportion is and how the proportion is. And that happened with this. I mean, I'm not paying attention much how the, the the leaves are. I was paying attention more how how this reflection is, for example, which I think is what it makes 
the the, the sketch uh, interesting, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have to say, even if you don't achieve what you're looking for, it is a great exercise because once you do it and it doesn't look right, it's how you understand it is not the way you did it. And then you, maybe you understand how it is. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, like when, when you mistake, you understand uh, that it's not the way you, you, you want it to be or it is in reality. And then you, next time you, can, you get to change it. So it's okay how it turns out. It's okay, it doesn't look like reality. Mm -hmm. Are you getting closer to the finishing touch, not touches now? Well, yeah, we, we could, we could go. Actually, we can put more layers and more layers here, you know. Oh yeah, you can keep going on and on yeah, and on and on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's all about time now, you know. So we can just take a closer look whenever you said so. So I could stop whenever you tell me to stop because. Um, it's it's um, your 7 p.m. now, but we can go a bit over time. I just want to make sure you're comfortable with the final piece. I'm never comfortable. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. I'm never comfortable. Don't ever look at my Instagram feed. I don't like anything <laughs> there. And everyone's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. No, uh, but you we're getting... Yeah, go ahead. You know, when you when you take like uh, second looks to your work after a while, and then you were so happy about it, and then you look uh, for a second time, you say, man, <laughs> it doesn't look like I thought it looked. But, yeah, which yeah. is good. It just means that you can see where the flaws are, and you can you know how to do it better next time, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's just part of the process. Cool. We're getting close to the end, so I just want to... Uh, share one more time the link to the mini workshop. So if you'd love, if you'd like to learn more about this kind of drawing, drawing with pens, different widths, doing a full page spread with more time next time with uh, yeah. David, feel free to join his mini workshop. It's only $5 and 50 cents. It's on January 22nd. If you cannot make it, it is recorded and you'll get the recording. So if you'd like to support David's work, link is in the chat. Also make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on anything. All of our live demos, mini workshops, and now also the podcast episodes release schedule, all of that is now on our Etcher calendar. You can uh, see that at the etcherlab.com forward slash uh, calendar. And I'll put the link on the chat as well. You can subscribe to that calendar and sync it with your own Google Calendar and uh, make sure you never miss anything, especially with us working so hard to do more of these free live demos um, per week. And there you go. So we had a question from Ramona asking if you were going to add more details to the lily pads to make the flower pop. And uh, yes, indeed, we are. Mm. Yeah, now it's just all about uh, getting darker, you know. There's some dark values here. Okay, question from the chat that because of the little delay between video and chat, I think it's being answered now. So Kitty was asking if you're going to shade the lily pads. She said leaves, I think she meant the lily pads. And yes, you are shading a few of them because she was. She said she's trying to shade them and it's not looking okay. She said, it looks like a shrimp. I highly doubt it, Kitty. Um, <laughs> so yeah, what kind of strokes do you do to shade those lily pads while still making them look flat? So. Just yeah, okay. normal flat. Let's go ahead. Let's yeah. Let's see. I'm gonna just get awesome. It. Close up. Close up here. And we can see this one right here. So if you take a look at this one, there's like a dark spot here. Then it's in the in the lily pad. There's a darker place here, and another one is more here, and there's a line here. Um, maybe that would be about it. So, 
we can do a little bit of shadow here. And this one is there's like two uh, values in the in the water drop inside the the, the, the leaf art. So this one will be the first one. And then see, some reflections inside this. And then the lighter values around here. Let's see. So and the, the direction you can make another layer. Wow. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase the the the. What I, I don't. Know, what wood pencil is that? We had someone asking at the beginning. Oh, it is a it is a Blackwing uh, 602, 602. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is an extensor, you know, because actually it is it is this is the the pencil. Um, <laughs> so I put on an extensor. But it's a black wind uh, CSO2, which is the one Thank I you. tried to use. So this is this is I don't know if you if you get to see it right. Mm -hmm. But this would be what I would do with the lily pot. I mean you could do a little bit more like you know. They are not particular easy to to sketch because uh, it's the, it, it changed really uh, so through the I mean the, mm -hmm. the change the values are really so through. Well, I could say that could be it for an hour to sketch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can take that, do that forever. Okay, it looks great to me. And this is it. We have a piece done in one hour because we did start at 10 minutes. So it's 10 minutes past. This was a one hour drawing. Um, thank you everyone for coming, for watching this. It means a lot to us. If Again, if you'd like to learn more from David, check out his workshop. There's limited seating and you'll be supporting the artist and it's only $5.50, link in the chat. Um, just a couple of more questions before we go. Uh, so yep. Dina is asking, oh no, Dina is not asking, I'm sorry. It was just a comment. And Danny though, Danny is asking, Seems like some of the super fine lines done first have been covered by brush or darker areas. Is that part of the process of working through a piece inevitable with ink? Say that again, please. Sorry. Um, that some of the very fine lines that you have were covered mm -hmm. with darker areas. Is that part of the process? Oh, yeah. When you're yes. working with Definitely. ink? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, I know I did this part in the beginning with the, the 005. And then I, I, cause I realized that what that was was uh, 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 one of the darker uh, places. So I just mm -hmm. put it with the brush. I just went with the brush. But if you didn't have the brush, I would be, I would, would uh, I would put so many layers with the 005 until get mm -hmm. some uh, value like this one. You know, it's just because we run fast and I use the, the yeah the big one so. Yeah, when you have more time, you just use the 005 for everything. And uh, yeah. wow. 
Okay, that makes sense. Uh, for more questions that we have coming about cross hatching, all of that is explained throughout the whole session. I recommend going through the recording. Uh, thank you everyone for being here. Again, a uh, feedback link feedback link will be in the chat if you guys can spare us 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds to one minute to reply to that. And um, yeah, that is uh, pretty much it. Thank you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will be back Sunday with um, Mark Brewer. And uh, thank you guys so much for coming. Let thank me just you. put this on uh, thank you gallery so, so you can see our faces. Thank you so, so, so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.